So this is a question about the Electoral College. Um, so the direct popular vote movement, especially since last November when the president lost the popular vote and won the electoral vote, has been gaining a lot of steam. And this interstate compact between, I think, 12 states is almost to 200 electoral votes. And uh, are you, I'm sure you're familiar with the compact that if, if they get to 270, it will trigger, then they would give their, their, all their electoral yeah. votes these states to the popular vote winner. So what do you think of the interstate compact? Do you think it's constitutional? What do you think of the direct popular vote in general? And uh, what could the federal government do to stop it if you think it's unconstitutional? Um, our founding fathers in general thought democracy was a terrible idea. <laughs> and you say that, and if you did, and I was careful to say they thought that, not me, because people would take that quote out of context and they'd think you're a horrible person, you're a terrible American, how can you be patriotic if you don't appreciate democracy? They didn't like democracy. They, they wanted sort of an indirect democracy, they wanted a republic, they wanted uh, some kind of laws to restrain majority rule. and particularly when people from the left tell me they're for democracy and we need to get away from this old-fashioned idea of the Constitution, I try to point out to them that, you know, democracy is what gave us Jim Crow. The Jim Crow laws were passed by majority legislatures. Now, some will argue, well, let's say, oh, well, blacks didn't get to vote in those states. Even when you add up all the black votes that could have floated, these were a majority of all these southern states passed these Jim Crow laws. That's when you do need a court system to step in in an undemocratic way and say, you, you can't have that. You've got to have equal treatment under the law. And so I want an activist court when there's a Jim Crow law. You know, um, I think uh, one of the things that I'm also interested in, I think is interesting from a law per per perspective, is the famous dissents. I think the dissents are more important and more interesting, actually, than the, the victories on the court. You know, so um, Harlan's dis or no, Brandeis's dissent in Plessy versus Ferguson. You know, it takes 50 years to overcome it, but it's one of the beautiful things about our country. It's not that we went 50 years doing the wrong thing, but that we're stable and civilized enough that we finally did the right thing after 50 years of doing the wrong thing. You know, with, with Plessy, I guess, finally being reversed with, with Brown. Um, other cases like that, the, um, the Olmstead decision back in the 1920s basically said your phone calls were not private that the police could tap your phone calls without a Fourth Amendment. That finally gets reversed in like 68 with the Katz decision. Long time. Uh, we have the same thing going on right now. They say that my records, if you're my bank and I give you my records, I have no right to privacy. This third party doctrine on records. I think they're completely wrong. And that's why, like, if you'll vote for me for the Supreme Court, <laughs> I will promise you I will overturn Maryland versus Smith and a couple of other of those because I think uh, they're wrong, completely wrong. But no one's ever going to say that because you would never get on the Supreme Court if you said you think some, some previous decision wrong. Can't, in fact, you can't talk about any decisions. And once you get on there, you can make those arguments. But really, I think we've, we've, we really do need to overturn and change the third party rule on, on privacy. And some of it could be contracts. I, I guarantee in the contract, if I give you my banking information, it says you're not supposed to share it, then the government says, oh, except for with us. Well, that's precisely the people I don't want you sharing my information <laughs> with is the government, even more than my neighbor. So I'm against electoral college, uh, changing electoral college. The electoral college is, a, is maybe less than democratic, but it's a way of preserving. We sort of preserved uh, democracy of population, but then also regional variety. Uh, Senate does the same thing. Senate's not democratic at all. Should the senator from Wyoming have the same vote as a senator from California? So if you get rid of the electoral college, you probably want to get rid of the Senate, too, and I can't have that at all. <laughs>